All right, we are working on solving special systems or special cases when solving systems. So we have our three methods and you can use any of those three methods to solve any system and get the same answer. Um, but what we haven't talked about is our, some of our special cases. So there are three possibilities when we solve a system. Um, one solution is what we've dealt with up until now, where we have that ordered pair that's one answer. Um, no solution means there's no answer. There never will be an answer. And infinitely many solutions means that there are an infinite number of answers. So that does not mean that everything is an answer, but rather it means that any point on the line is an answer because when you have infinitely many solutions, you really have two equations that are the exact same line. So infinitely many solutions means there are a lot of solutions, but not everything's a solution. And we'll get more into that on our table. Okay, so we're going to fill out this table together. Um, we can determine if a system has one, no, or infinitely many solutions three different ways. So let's talk about graphing first. When we graph two lines, um, we will, if we have one solution, they will cross at one point. Okay, so obviously they're not always going to look exactly like these two lines, but they would cross at one point. If we have no solution, that means our two lines are parallel. They're never going to cross. No matter what we do, they're never going to touch, so there's no solution. Infinitely many solutions means our two equations turn out to be the exact same line. So our answer is everything, every single point that would be on these two lines. Okay, instead of just one point, it's every single point. If we're looking at our slope and our y-intercept, if there is one solution, then our slopes are different. Um, B could be the same, it could be different. All that really matters is that your slopes are different. So I'm going to change this to be slope is different. B is allowed to be the same, but your slope is different. And often your B will also be different. For no solution, slope is the same. Like they could both have a slope of one half. And um, Y intercept would be different though. And for infinitely many solutions, they're the exact same line. So the slope is the same. Y-intercept is the same. And then algebraically, one solution, you'll always have x equals a number, y equals a number for our ordered pair x, y. This is our what we've been dealing with all up until now. I'm going to go ahead and add a whole bunch of points on this one. I'm backtracking here for a second, but infinitely many solutions means all of these points on your line. So not everything, but there are a lot. Um, no solution, you're going to end up with something that is not true. If we solve it algebraically, you'll end up with something like 8 equals 10. That's not true. If you have infinitely many solutions, you'll end up with something like 8 equals 8, which is true. Okay? And we'll get to what that looks like in our examples. Okay? So this table, depending on what method you use, um, both substitution and elimination will get you to this algebraically step. Graphing, if that's your preferred method, and this is what those pictures would look like. All right, y equals x minus 1 and negative x plus y equals 2. So honestly, my favorite way to decide how many solutions they have is to just start working the problem. This is already set up where y is isolated, so the easiest method to solve this problem would be substitution. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to take what y is equal to, and I'm going to plug it in for y. So I'm going to have negative x plus x minus 1 equals 2. Now, when I go to solve this, negative x plus x is 0, and they're going to cancel out. And I'm going to be left with negative 1 equals 2. That is not a true statement. Therefore, I have no solution. 
Now you could also graph these either by hand or on Desmos. So let's go ahead and do that so you can see what that would look like. And again, Desmos is also a great tool to check your answer as you go, but don't rely on it because you will have to show your work on your test this time. Um, and now you can see in our Desmos, these are parallel lines, so that also fits with our no solution. They're never going to cross. All right, last example for today. Again, this one's set up where substitution would be easiest, so that's the method I'm going to use. You could graph it or rearrange it to do elimination, that's up to you. But I think this is also a good one to show you for substitution because this is a negative one y. Sometimes um, adding that one is helpful when you're plugging in because you're going to have to distribute that negative. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'll have negative 2x minus 1. Sometimes students will forget and leave this as a plus 1. Again, 2x minus 2x is going to be 0. Those go away, but then we're left with negative 1 equals negative 1. That's true. That's a true statement. So we have infinitely many solutions. If I can spell infinitely many solutions. Okay, so you are also, again, you could graph it. Let's go ahead and put that in here. Okay, and then you can see, like if I turn my purple line off and back on, they're the exact same line, so that's why they're infinitely many solutions. All right. Um, so at this point, you do have a delta math assignment to work on. You'll have five where it'll just ask you, do you have one, no solution, or infinitely many solutions?